In our fast-changing world, traditions like the White House Correspondents' Dinner are important. I mean, really? What is this city? And why am I required to come to it? Connie's the one, you know, being very diplomatic in the meetings, you know. Well, that's good. It's great. We're all on the same pattern because at the end of the day, you know, freedom is what we all want. The leads will come out like, North Korea said, what? Okay, all right, all right. Hold my purse, Mr. President, hold my purse. And Fox News is sort of like a Waffle House. Yeah, it's relatively normal in the afternoon, but as soon as the sun goes down, there's a drunk lady named Janine threatening to fight every Mexican who comes in. You can't throw me out. I know the real president. The White House Correspondents' Dinner, a uniquely Washington tradition. The first dinner actually took place back in 1921. It only had 50 people. This year, it's going to be star-studded. It's going to have a guest list over 2,500 people. It's a rare ch chance for the press corps to let its hair down and socialize with Washington brokers and celebrities. Sometimes it's criticized for that. 16 presidents and vice presidents since Calvin Coolidge have attended the dinner. One who did not? Donald Trump never made an appearance during his presidency, instead sent his press secretary. In recent years, a speaker, typically a comedian, does roast the commander-in-chief. And this year's roaster is joining us now, stand-up comedian <laughs> and correspondent of The Daily Show, Roy Wood Jr., who we're yes. all hoping forgets Yay. our names by tomorrow yeah, night. You never oh. met us. Yeah, Wipe we, it clean. Wipe Caitlin it clean. Good to see you. Oh, and how did he die? We're going to have Anderson Cooper. It's great to meet you. Um, OK, this is the weirdest gig, right? Like, yeah. the people in the room aren't your audience. And how do you yeah. practice? It's you have to still remember that regular people are also watching this. That room represents like the one percent of the power than how decisions are made in this country. But the people that are affected by those decisions are watching the program too. So I think there's a way to honor both both like both audiences. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's a gig. And that's what I have to tell myself while I sit and comb through these jokes at 1 o'clock in the morning in New York. Uh, but it's a good time. And I think it's an honor to be able to do it because when you really look at the way the power dynamics are set up in this country, very few citizens get an opportunity to have a microphone in front of everybody. Everybody who has stuff that needs to be heard. Now, the important part is that you want to make it funny. I don't think I need to get up there and be yeah. just right. Like, there's a humor to righteousness balance mm. that you have to find within what you're doing. So that's the part you can't do in the comedy club because you cannot go, oh, joke, joke, joke. Oh, Joe Biden and Kamala. Oh, re-election. Also, did you know that journalists are getting locked up abroad? Right, right. It's like, this is just a... Which is the line you have to walk, right? It's half a political event. Yeah. I mean, fundamentally, do you have a sense of, like, how do you even make a joke in the age when there is no shame? Well, I think you still make the joke. There's still a punchline. Now, the shame part is about whether or not the joke can influence change. I don't think the correspondence dinner... I mean, we would have to check and do the research, but I don't, I don't know of any politician that got hit with a joke and was like, you know what, let me go ahead and reconsider my whole platform. Uh, Donald Trump? Yeah, well, <laughs> he said, let yeah. me yeah. start a platform. Yeah. Right. But, like, to just... There's nothing I can... You think the, the, the Ron DeSantis jokes I got in the clip okay, for tomorrow, you think that Ron DeSantis tomorrow's about, you know what, man, you right. Go on and put the black history back in them books. <laughs> A glimmer of where this is going. I, I'm here. We would hope. <laughs> we, I saw you had that hope in your eye. You like you hope it was brief, it's and not then like happen. a flame went is out. Is he fighting Mickey Mouse? Okay, <laughs> you know this He's is fighting <laughs> Mickey Mouse. You can't change that person's mind with a joke. <laughs> it's possible. I'm raising my voice. No, I love the... it. It's morning energy. We love it. <laughs> we love energy. All, all jokes, but I love your story, too. I want our viewers to get to know you a little bit before they see you up there. The yeah. fact that, you know, you are born here in New York, but then you grew up in Alabama. Yeah, I was born in New York. I grew up in Birmingham. My father was a radio journalist, but he deliberately embedded himself in pretty much any black conflicts that were yeah. going on, black platoons in Vietnam, Vietnam yeah. Soweto. Uh, he was in uh, Rhodesia, Zimbabwe now. Um, and then I got to college. Stuart Scott was my North Star for journalism. Mm. I wanted to be funny and talk about sports. Got down to college, got, got in trouble. Apparently, you have to pay for clothes <laughs> when you go to the mall. You do not just get to leave with them. You have to give them money. But that, I did not. But that's what got me in a stand Because that year you had that, that, um, that uh, 
FAM University let you, well, let you, gave you, gave you a year off to think suspension. about things. Yeah, suspension is a word. <laughs> um, yeah. To get that's when you started. Yeah, that's when you yeah. started this comedy, right? But to, but to the credit of Florida a and University, they allowed me to come back and get their journalism yep. degree, and that, be, and that gave me a double-edged sword because Love now that. I'm a comic and I'm a journalist. I was doing radio, and the irony of it now is that as much as I didn't want to be like my father, topically speaking. That's literally what I do now, is talk Love about it. the world issues. I'm just a little funnier. It's poetic. Who are your targets for tomorrow night? Um, see, y'all, <laughs> I know what you're trying to ask me, and yeah. I'm trying to like answer it without Like if there's a brunette who's really into that, Alabama, that, yeah, like with yes, that Yes, I'm going to talk about what happened maybe. this week. I got to talk about everything this week. Did Let me just say this week? There was a lot of stuff that happened this week. There were many things that happened this week, World and those week. things have to be discussed in a fair way, <clears throat> in a very fair way. Kevin McCarthy, I think, is bracing for that, yeah. so don't worry. Yeah. No, trust me, I'm not going to lose my job. I'm not trying to get in trouble, OK? <laughs> Roy That's Wood the Jr. most important part of Correspondence Dinner, is leave employed. <laughs> <laughs> That's your goal. I leave employed. That's the goal. I love that. Roy Wood Jr., we're all going to be there. We cannot wait to see what you have prepared. I know You've been preparing really hard for this. Thank so you all. Can't wait.